One thing we're going to start doing on Fridays, uh, since we're doing this thing on Facebook Live, the Face a Book Alive, we are going to start taking uh, viewer questions. And so if you want to tweet us questions at DCTF or you want to put questions in the comments below where I'm pointing right now, huh. am I pointing to it? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. I don't know. Um, so if you want to ask those questions, you can let us know, and we'd be happy to answer them on the air. We've got a few of them that have come in this week. Uh, Max, what's our first question? Should the UIL have instant replay at the state championship games? So this is an interesting question because obviously the thing that stands in the way of instituting uh, instant replay in high school football games is that not every game is televised. Right. It makes a lot of sense that there is instant replay in the NFL. Every game's on TV. There are 500 cameras at every game. Uh, even to the even at the point in college where yeah. there are cameras at every game that they can they've now instituted that there are cameras at every game whether or not they're televised or not ninety nine percent of college games are televised at some point or on on some level so they have the replay capabilities the biggest issue is that at high school if when we were at Diana Texas right. Diana Texas ain't gonna have going to no. have television coverage, yeah. and they're probably going to have one camera, and that camera is probably going to be in the end zone. It's going to be the coach cam that, that they get their film from, the all 22. So the question is, at the state championship games, which are happening at AT&T Stadium in December, all the games will be televised by Fox Sports Southwest. Right. So they will have the NFL treatment, which is one of the things that makes it so cool. In fact, I think uh, in a couple of years ago, and I think they had it last year, they brought in like the, what, what are they called, the spider cam? Yes. The one the that's like uh, on the yes. wires. That yeah. is so cool. Every time that's every time I see that, yeah. that's one of the things that like one day I'll grow up and I won't be impressed by that, but that day ain't today because that's right. really awesome. It's pretty cool, yeah. So the question is, now that you have all these cameras around, right? can you or should you use instant replay? I say no. Okay. The reason is that we want to treat every Texas high school football game the same. And if we start getting to You the, shouldn't treat the championship game as more important. And if we get, It is the championship game. And if we get to the state championship game and we start changing the rules, then to me that uh expresses a deep kind of philosophical difference that I have. Um, as far as treating everything the same, so I would say no. I don't want to. I don't want to start. I want to get to the most important game of the year and then start changing the rules. I think that that's. I, I have that's a, that's a bad absolutely thing. zero issue with making sure the state title game is more important and is handled more importantly. Uh, Westlake fans would like a word with you because they lost on a play that was not a touchdown to Ulysses Trinity just a few years ago. And if it had been reviewable, it would have been clear that it was not a touchdown okay. catch. All right. So who did who did Westlake beat in the semifinals that year? Do you know? Mm -hmm. You don't know? No. Do you think that that semifinal team would like uh, instant replay in their game? No. I just think that's silly. And I think no. that if you start treating I, – I agree with you that the state championship games are the most – they're the pinnacle, right? They're, they're – by so, their very so, nature. So why not treat By their them very that way? nature. Because the semifinals and the quarterfinals are just as important. And we shouldn't start – shifting rules around just because of the venue. Look, I'm not saying the other games aren't more important, but why wouldn't you take advantage of having the technology at the most important game of the year? Because I don't want to start changing rules around. W what if we started saying, okay, we want to, um, we want to, uh, you only get two timeouts instead of three. Come on. Really? What's, what's the difference? We're making the game tougher now? Like, just arbitrarily? We're just trying to make sure that the right result happens. I just, I just think that when you get to the state championship games, there's no reason to ask them to start changing rules. I think one challenge per half. I keep it in your back pocket I, in case something like the Euless Trinity thing I happens. Totally, again. totally disagree. You're totally disagree. wrong. What's that? That's okay. Uh, this is actually good. We've talked about this a little bit on on the podcast already, but it's probably worth bringing up again, right? Could the Friday and state uh, Friday and Saturday state finals start earlier or finish earlier. What what are some solutions to make that happen? Because, you know, so we, we yeah we it, talked about Thursday exactly. already. Well, Thursday the big issue is <laughs> last year the Wascom Franklin game started at ten forty five, ten thirty, ten forty five. We were out of there at like one. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. that's too late. It's that's crazy. Too late. So your suggestion there was obviously let's start the games earlier. We're we not do. going to this yeah. year. We found out the schedule says Correct. we're going to start at ten a.m. just like last year. We're going to ten one five and eight. Yeah. 
and that last game's not going to get done until one in the morning. Yeah. It's just what's going to happen. Now, I have a solution that everyone's going to hate. Okay, so the, these, to be yeah. clear, so yeah. everyone knows in advance, these start at noon. These start at noon. Yeah. Now, in, in these games, first of all, these aren't as big of a deal right. that because it's noon, four, and eight, and there's four hours allotted between right. starts of games. Right. That's not to say that these games don't get backed up. Yeah. But they don't get backed up to the point that it's like, oh my gosh, a nine, an eight o'clock game is kicking off at 1045. Right. It will be like, oh, the eight o'clock game is kicking off at like... 8.45 or 9. Sure. And that's unfortunate, yeah. but I don't think it's a huge problem. Right. However, if we do want to remedy that, and we want to remedy, I think, a lot of problems yeah. with what with the timing issue of the Texas High School Football State Championship games, I think there's a very easy solution that everyone's going to hate. <laughs> okay. You want to know what it is? What is it? 20-minute halftime. Boy, you know, so we, we go back and forth on this. I mean, my... My personal viewing preference is a shorter halftime, mm -hmm. of course. Yes. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think we both recognize, um, you know, to the <laughs> bemusement of high school coaches everywhere, the UIL also uh, governs band competitions. Mm -hmm. they, they hold it just as highly. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want to give them the attention they deserve. Uh, people do not attend the band state championships in the same way that they attend high school football. Full stop. Don't need your opinion on why or how. But I do recognize the sense of obligation by the UIL to say, this is a big moment for the school. Mm -hmm. The band has worked very hard all year. They deserve their moment. To be clear, the um, the halftime as presently constructed is 28 minutes. 28 minutes. Which and it never is, is 28 minutes. It's never 28 minutes. Uh, unless you're at a game like we were at last night where it's two East Texas bands, uh, military-style military bands who finish Perfectly, and they have timed that time. thing. Everyone, they do. Yes. The, they have four minutes of the of the of the uh, like the dance team and yeah. the the tw baton yeah. twirlers, then the march and the song, and then they got ten minutes of performance, and they're yeah. gone. They're gone. They were last night. Mm -hmm. Credit to the Or City and New Diana mm -hmm. bands. They were off with one minute to spare. Yes, they were. Choice. It's wonderful. Yes. So that is a solution. If you are really concerned about these Friday and Saturday games starting off late, then I think you do that. The other option would be. That you kick the first game off at ten, and you go and you put five hours between games, and mm -hmm. you go ten and then two, and then seven, or so, or ten and yeah. uh, ten and three and right. ten three and eight. That's what you do. But I also recognize that there's a lot of people who are against the idea of a morning kickoff. I understand sure. that, and I get it. I really do. So for me, those are your options if you want to. Um, if you want to do. If you want to adjust the timing of the Friday and Saturday of the state championship game, yeah. it's to kick it off a little bit earlier or you shorten the half times. Now, again, you are playing with fire. You're peeing in somebody's yard yeah. by, by yeah. you know, uh, by shortening the half time. But that is a solution, a it bad is a solution, solution, but a, an admittedly unpopular solution, but a solution. Do we have any okay. other questions? We do. We have uh, William Dyson in our Facebook comments. Oh, interesting. Submitted. Yeah. He would like to know, how do you feel about Reagan, Cor Reagan County versus Sonora tonight. Ah, uh, excellent. So we This had, is one we've talked about a lot. We're we actually did. both very excited about this game. So Reagan County and Sonora, we talked about it. I, I did my prediction on... Um, fixing to pick them. On fixing to pick them. TexasFootball.com slash previews where you can see that. Um, for me, Reagan County is 8-0, off to a great start. I'm not sure they've played anybody like Sonora. Right. And so for me, this is a big, important game for them. They get them at home. There's people saying that people... Many people are saying. Many people are saying. <laughs> and Sonora is the traditional power of out course. here. Let's 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 put that established out there for people who don't know. Yes, yeah. uh, Sonora is the Sonora is the um, is the established power. Yeah. They're the team that's played for titles. They're the team that's won titles. This is the pride. This is the pride of that area. Reagan County is the new kid on the block. They are yeah. the they are the team that's never had really had this kind of success out of Big Lake. Um, and so, I wonder, can they? Come, you know, can they come up with a win? I'm picking Sonora, but I do think that Reagan County is going to have a great shot to win this game, especially, uh, you know, because I really, truly believe in in what uh, in in kind of the, I, I believe in their offense. I think that yeah. their offense can can hum. I think their offense has what it takes uh, to really do uh, make some uh, make some plays in this one. Their quarterback L.J. DeLeon and their running back Carlos Del Rio have been great. I like Sonora in this one. 
I think that they're a little more battle tested, but I will tell you that if Reagan County wins this game, I am fully I'm putting on my little my little owl beanie and my little Reagan County <laughs> pom poms and I'm waving them on. I'm on the bandwagon fully if they beat Sonora tonight. Yeah, so, so that's right. uh, that's what I've got. Any other we, questions? Oh, dude, we're getting tons of questions now. Oh my god. Yeah. So thoughts ah. on the Canyon Eagles, which oh. I think is good because we can plug our uh, our interview. Yes. Earlier earlier this week, we talked with Blake Bryant, the head coach of the uh, the Canyon Eagles, a little bit earlier. They got a big game this week against Dumas, another unbeaten, another Dumas team, uh, or another unbeaten team that I think is in for their biggest test yet. Um, for Canyon, it's all about their quarterback, right? It's yep. all about Gunnar Palacios, who's been so good right. for them, and their linebacker, Dane Douglas. Yeah. Uh, those are their two superstars. For Dumas, they're very quietly unbeaten, and it starts with their defense. Derek Ditto, their linebacker, has been fantastic. So right. for me, this game comes down to whether or not Canyon can move the ball against Dumas. This, yeah. I think the onus is on this Canyon offense to get past the kind of wall that nobody has been able to get past yeah. with this Dumas defense. I like Canyon in this game. I think they've got the, the, sing, the two best players in this game in Palacios uh, and Douglas, but I think this game is close, and I think that the Canyon defense would be well, you know, would be, um, I think it's important for them to stand up and, and make their presence felt as well. What's right. next? Who do you think takes 4A D1 Region One. This wow. is from Julio Garcia. This wow. is a good question because uh, wow, it's it's very <sighs> deep cut. Look, okay, I think we're both going to agree that we feel like Argyle is the favorite. Yes. Correct. Uh, yes. Until someone knocks them off the mountain, that feels correct. Okay. However, I do feel like it's pretty wide open behind them. I right? do, I do. So for well, it's for a D one Region One. Yes. All right. To me, you've got Argyle, and Argyle starts up here. Right. All right. They're the favorite until somebody knocks them off and right. makes them look anything less than immortal than they're right. the favorite. And we might get that tonight. We might, because yeah. they've got a big game against Sanger. But I will tell you that lurking be- beneath them are about four or five teams that I think they have matchup problems with. I think Abilene Wiley is a matchup problem for them, I think Andrews is a matchup problem for them. I think in the right situation, a team like Decatur or Levelland could be a bad matchup for yeah. uh, for Argyle. So, to be clear, my pick right now, if you're asking me, is Argyle. Yeah. I think they're the best team in that region. But I think that this is a game of matchups. And I think that there are some teams that match up pretty well against Argyle. Yeah. So, um, the Eagles are my pick, but I also reserve the right to change because it's high school football. We no, never really know what we do. That's what true. We, we have any other questions? We have, we have. We're getting more questions. Give me one more. One more question. Make it a good one. Okay. Well, there's. All right. We can do. T- we can do these two really quickly. Oh, no, 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 no. One's easy. One's you got easy. places to go, people. One's, one's easy. Hey, I'm thrilled that they're 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 putting in some some input here. Okay. Okay. Uh. All right, hold on. Oh, my god! I got to get the graphics. Okay. Number one, what do you think about Cedar Ridge Pflugerville tonight? I think we both agree. Cedar Ridge has been unbelievable this year. I love Cedar Ridge. I don't – I mean, I don't really see a path to victory for Pflugerville. They got to no. grind it out and keep the ball away from that Cedar Ridge offense. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, no, I don't. Cedar I don't. Ridge is in prime position to not really get tested at this point until they get to the playoffs, Yeah, right? I mean, uh, Pflugerville's – I think Pflugerville enters this game as a pretty substantial, you know, underdog. They can't score. And I mean, they're averaging 16 points a game, and this. Meanwhile, so if, so their hope right now. Now the Pflugerville yeah. defense has been good, and I think yeah. that this is a good test for yeah. this kind of big Cedar Ridge offense yeah. with Coach Sean Bell. That said, yeah. there is one path for victory for them, and that is right. something like 17 to 14, and they turn right. the ball over like 15 times. Right. That's where Pflugerville can win this game. Cedar Ridge, I think, is a prohibitive favorite in this yeah. one, but I would go with Cedar Ridge in this one. All right, so last one. Last, last one. Last one. Sorry, guys. We got one more. One more. I'm sorry. We can only do one more, but we'll clearly we need to do a awesome job with this going forward because people love this. Um, okay. For those who care, this is from Brief Input. I don't know what their actual name is. For those who care, Huddle winning tonight would set up Cedar Park to potentially go D1. Mm-hmm. What's the key for Hutter, Huddle to beat Rouse? Because Rouse has played really well the last two weeks. That's absolutely true. I think we're both going to start in the same place. Hutto quarterback Chase Griffin. Of course. Who might be one of the best young quarterbacks in the state, right? I if agree. he has a big game, I, I don't know how Rouse stops them. I agree. Um, that's the big the big issue here. Yeah. Now, you know, the the issue for Hutto, 
um, all year has been just they, they've been a little bit inconsistent defensively. Now, they've right. lost a lot of close games. Yeah. They lost to Georgetown in overtime. Yep. They lost Pflugerville Connolly by five. But they're on a nice run right now. That said, their nice run is against teams that, in my view, they're right. better than. They're better right. than Elgin. They're better than Bastard. They're Absolutely. better than these few. Now you got the grind here with yep. Rouse and Cedar Park back-to-back. Yep. Um, I will tell you that if you are Cedar Park, um, boy, I'm not sure where you want to go. Um, I mean, I, I think, if, if you're I in division, if you're in division two, I think if you're in division two, it's probably a little thinner, but at the same time, um, actually, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to say they want to get division two because, I, because so that I, yeah, because, either, either way, let's put yeah. it this way. Either way, there is one big bully standing in the way right. for, for them in yeah. region, in, in region three. Yeah. It is either, either and D1, it's Manville, right? D1, it's Manville and D2, it's college station. Yeah. Yeah, those are tough matchups. So I, either way, I mean, I, if I'm them, I probably don't want Manville. I, look, I this mean, is a six a six a move down who has lit the world on fire. But Cedar I mean, pick, pick, pick your unreal. poison, pick your poison. But I, I will say, Cedar Park's defense is unreal. I, I don't think we we understand how great they are. They may not be the world's most exciting team to watch because they just play great defense and grind people to dust. Mm-hmm. But it's it's really truly impressive how good that defense is each year. And now they got a great quarterback in Max Sexton. So. Tom. Okay. There's a lot, lot uh, going on there. Look, I think Cedar Park has got to enter the playoffs regardless as a, no worse than co-favorite to come out of their region. Yeah. But either way, there is a team that is lurking. Yeah. And I think, I guess I'd rather play College Station than Manville because I think Manville is the best team in 5A. Maybe yeah. either of them are Denton Ryan, which right. maybe we'll find out in a title game. Maybe. Either way. As Rob Corey is saying, he'd love to see that game. I would. I would love to see that game I, too. Yeah. Right now... Look, I I think I think Rouse probably beats Hutto, but we'll you know let's we'll let's see. let's tackle this on on Monday. We'll have new pr- playoff projections to Texas football dot slash playoff. Yeah, I don't. I think if we stayed here all day, we'd be answering questions, well, and that's awesome. I we will go. have to uh, plan for that go. going I forward. Go. I didn't pee before the show, guys. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. <laughs>